Hello, everybody. So today we have a unboxing video. This one is from NGC. Hopefully I'm doing this right because it's kind of a one time go thing. As you can see, this nice big box here just came uh, today from NGC. So let's get cutting into it and see what we got. I'm going to do it all, you know, in one go or I just won't put the video up if I, if I mess up. So uh, hopefully I don't mess up. But they, they certainly do package the ever-living heck out of these things. Which is good. Keeps your coins safe when you get them back. There we go. Oh, and another box inside of that. Put that off to the side. Let's see what we got here. I get in you. I guess over here. Can I just peel it off? Maybe. Hmm. Let's see. All right. So. Of course I opened it sideways. Of course I opened it sideways, but I can pull it out. There we go. All right, so as you can see, these are all the coins that came in it. Let me try to get that a little more centered in the screen for you. Sorry about that. All right, so um, all my paperwork, chuck that off to the side. Oh, oh, that's a bummer. We got a return. Not, uh, oh, well, I guess we'll do the, I didn't realize I was getting one returned. I should have paid more attention. All right. Can't tell if the auto focus is on or not. Let's see, yep, there it is. All right, so this is a, a German metal I sent in. As you can see, they said it's, uh, not encapsulated, it's an ineligible type. Not a hundred percent sure why it's an ineligible type. I wish they would actually say that. But not an eligible type. So, you know, with that I actually don't oh I got two of them returned. Um so I don't get uh, my money back. This is a nice buffalo nickel. This one is a 1921 S. They say altered surfaces. Hmm. I sent it in because it's a uh, it's an error. I'll have to do some close up stuff on a on a stream with you guys and show that one off and and why I thought it was an error. And we'll see. Maybe I'll send it over to to Anax or PCGS. See what they have to say. All right. So those I don't know. I don't know how this is all put in here, so we'll just go one coin at a time and see what we get. So this one first, come on you. There we go. It's a 1984 Washington Quarter. Nice, beautiful, flashy one. Mint error. It was struck off center, and they graded it uh, MS-65. So, nice, beautiful, flashy coin. Not too shabby for a grade as well. So most of these I'll try to do like single videos with and show some better pictures or something. But, you know, this is, uh, this is about as good as I can. There we go. Sorry. There we go. That's some good lighting, I guess, for the coin itself. All right. So that's that one. Let's see what this one was. This is, oh, come on in, get. It just doesn't want to focus. There we go. All right. So this, hopefully if I'm seeing it right, this is an 1865. It's a dated. And they called it JPR 36 AR 18 millimeter. It's an Abraham Lincoln little metal. It's a metal or a token, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, it's quite nice. On the reverse, 
and get the lighting right. Man, the lighting is not good in here without it. Actually, hmm. I'll have to figure out better lighting next time. Sorry, this so this this will just be a junky video. But all this will come out with pictures later, I promise. Everything will come out. And some of this stuff will go to Michael Kittle, so you get nice, very beautiful videos out of it as well. So this is a nice Abraham Lincoln medal uh, from the 18, uh, 1865, so right after death. Is it me, or maybe I can just, can I, is it, no, it's autofocus. It's just not working very well. Yeah. I guess I can bring it closer. There we go. That's better. So, very nice coin. All right. We'll just work from one end to the other. Ah, very nice. So, this is actually just a nice big giant chunk of gold. Uh, it's undated. It's Sweden gold. Um, it's Hildebrand 188. Uh, Linian, it's from the Science Academy. You can see it's a nice, beautiful, um, I'm actually kind of amazed, if you look, extraordinarily flashy. I'm amazed it didn't get proof-like. I don't think it would have gotten deep cam, but it's probably because of the reverse. The reverse is pretty good, but not as flashy as the obverse. But a nice big old chunk of gold, as you can see, um... They put it right there on the label, 27.94 uh, grams. So that's the weight uh, for the coin. That actually happens to be one of the coin store's coins. So that one will be going back to the coin store um, shortly, and I'm sure they will put it up on, on the eBay. So next is this, let's see, it's a Germany, uh, another Germany medal. The Garden Building Association, uh, it says Luz, 43 millimeter, and Mint State 64 is the grade that it came back. So, very nice metal. As you can see, she turned out quite well. So, very, very happy with that. Very, very nice one to add to the collection. What else do we got? Oh, another medal. This one's even better. This is an 1897. Uh, better when I say for grade. Um, uh, but it's an 1897 dated Austria silver. Uh, it's Hauser 7363. Edward Faust is birthday, celebrating his birthday. Uh, this one got graded Mint State 66. That's the reverse. It's a, uh, it's quite a nice metal. Was stoked to uh, to pick this one up as well. Let's see what else. I mean, we got actually we still got another ten or fifteen to go. So this will take take me a little bit of a box opening. This is from the Santa Monica Breakwater. This is HK683. This is a so-called dollar. This one will definitely be making its way to Michael Kittle, as he uh, he definitely has the market for these. Um, it, uh, he has a lot of customers who come to him for high-grade so-called dollars. So this is definitely going to be... Uh-oh. My thing stopped working. Why did it stop working? There it goes. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, this will definitely be... Come on, you want to start again? No? Maybe. And the fun with figuring this out. How about now? Mm, hold on one second. Let me uh, turn the camera back on and off, see if that works. Yes, there it goes. So, um, yeah, he has the customers for these. So these will definitely be uh, headed his way just because he knows how to sell them. And this one's actually quite a nice looking one. Again, I'm sure beautiful videos will come up on his page showing truly how nice these are. Um, but until I get better lighting set up where you don't see my face in the reflection, this is what we get. But it came out a, ni a nice MS-64. 
that's nice for a nice old metal. Let's see. I think we had... Ah, no. Okay. Um, this one I was a little bit bummed about because it came back damaged, but not completely bummed. This, uh, I just thought was a neat little metal. It was cool. Picked it up quite a while back, years ago. Um, and it ended up being from 1860. It's a George Washington, uh, your GW-264. It's silver. There are various metals. This is, uh, it has George and Martha on it. It's the plain edge. This one came back, unk details damaged. And I think it's better than just unk details. I mean, it's thoroughly, thoroughly proof-like, as you can see. But it does have an odd, let's see if I can get it in the light. Right at the ponytail of George, it's truly hard to see. And I need a macro lens to be able to show you guys better. But there's kind of a, a little widget on the outside of it. It looks like it was pressed under something. I thought it was just, and it really does look to me as though it was a planchet error, but it probably, if they're saying it's it was after, then it was done after. Um, but you can see it's got George Washington on one side, and it's got uh, Martha. Let's see if we can get her in the light. Martha on the other side. And it is nicely toned. This one will probably make its way to uh, to Mr. Kittle as well. Um, because even in low grades with issues, these are, come to find out, which I didn't know, extraordinarily hard to come by. So that's pretty nice. This one I didn't even know existed. But I, um, I found it uh, at, at, a, at, a, at an auction. And it was actually quite uh, ugly. Very, very ugly. Um, and NGC offers their NCS, which is their conservation services. And I sent it into them, hoping they would be able to help it. And they did help it. They took it from what looked like uh, an extra fine um, with, you know, nice proof-like in the reverse. If you want to show it, there we go. Uh, with a nice proof like in the reverse, to being a uh, MS-63 red-brown proof like. Now, this thing is basically fully red, other than some some copper spots, you know, on the reverse. But, still a very nice coin. Um, and it's from the Golden Gate Expo, 1939. The Isla del Tesoro. So, it... Uh, it's, it's one I've never seen before, so it will definitely uh, be making its way into another collector's hand. It's nice, but it's just not something I collect, you know, and it will let me uh, go after go after something I want, which is what we should all do. If we see great deals, we should get them and then try to, you know, upgrade our personal collection if we can. So, but uh, as you guys have seen in the past, one thing I do collect is errors it's trying to focus on something else that's the problem there we go this is an 1899 mint error uh it came back au 53 brown struck off center let's see if i can show you can see definitely off center struck um this one actually i purchased at one of our local coin club meetings so it was part of two. I think the other one's in here as well. So very, very nice. Very stoked to get this one. Add this to the collection um, for for Indian head scent errors. I am trying to get one from every single date, but obviously some of those are significantly expensive. And it's kind of any error. If I get a clip, I'd call that a happy day. So, you know, something from kind of anything. This one is kind of fun. Um, I found this in the junk at the coin store, like in the bottom of a bag of stuff we bought and boss man thought it was trash. I'm like, I don't think it is. He said, somebody cut it in half. I said, I don't think it is. So uh, it's actually really cool. It's a multi-error. This is a 1955 one cent mint error. It did come back MS-64 red brown. It was broad struck on scrap planchet. So yes, that is just half of the scent there that you see. Um, it's 0.94 grams. I think they're supposed to weigh 
what, 3.2 grams? So, and, and it's it's hard to tell because I can't really show it. Well, there you go. If you see, it's also a very, very thin piece. So it's, it is half the design of the coin, but it's, uh, it's definitely not um, the weight. So I got to figure this out. My, my camera wants to keep shutting down for some reason. So, but at least I'm figuring the, the video part of this out. All right. So next, this had some very, oops, come on now. You want to show everything properly. There we go. All right. This is a 1959D, the first year of the Memorial back. This is a Mint Air MS64 Red Brown with a curved clip at 530. So you can see right there the curved clip. It's nice. It also actually has some, um, some toning, which, of course, is not showing very well as far as I can see on the screen. But it is quite nice of a coin. So... There you go. With the white background, you can see that clip a little bit better on the bottom. So this one, I've already got a nice 1959 with the clip, but this one had the toning on it. And some people just absolutely die and pay way more for toning. So I will make sure that gets itself onto uh, somebody else who wants it a little bit more than I. This one is a 1961. This one came back MS-65 red bound. And it says a ragged clip. I was thinking it was going to be a defective planchet, but I guess uh, I guess they consider this one a ragged clip. I just thought the planchet was missing a piece, but it was straight up at, uh, at well, they said at 1230, but it's basically across the entire top of the coin, as you can see. Um, this one again, this one's actually got amazing toning. Wish my lighting was better. Um, but... This one, and on the reverse, it's also got really, really cool, uh, like, neon color toning. As you can see, it shoot across there. But it will look a lot better when Michael gets his hands on some of these. Even some of the ones I keep, I might have to, to see if I can hire him to, uh, to do some photos. Um, all right. This, this was the other one I picked up at the, uh, at the Coin Club meeting. This was a 1900. I thought it was just going to be a, another, uh, like a broad struck or uh, off center, but it's kind of cool because it came out as an obverse misaligned die. So as you can see on the bottom side of the scent, see it looks like it's, it's, uh, it's it wasn't struck in the right place. But if you look at the reverse of the scent, oops, if you look at the reverse of the scent, it looks just fine so that's going to be kind of cool um to add to the collection i didn't have a 1900 either so that was nice to pick that one up uh, let's see this is a 1903 indian head scent i actually got lucky and just got a whole bunch of indian head scents recently so it was nice to be able to send those all in this one is a curved clip at what seven o'clock so if i hold it up right there you can see that in the bottom left hand corner with the white background it shows up much better um just a, a nice circulated coin not a high grade obviously a fine 15 nothing crazy but i didn't have a uh, a 1903 either so until this so i'm glad all these actually like show the reverse but it's it's not a spectacular coin it's just a a nice fine graded coin um but it, it was nice that all of these that came to me recently all had different grades. So uh, when we see struck through coins, normally we see, you know, little small strike throughs, um, maybe a, a little drop of grease or something, something. This one was actually absolutely huge, as you can see. Um, let me try to get the, the label first. There you go. It's a it's actually a silver Warnickel, 1945 S, and the uh, and came back to find 15, and the reverse was struck through on the whole entire you know top right hand qu quadrant of the coin. So and relatively deep, it had something else huge on it, a ch probably a chunk of another coin, a scrap, is probably what it had. So 
the uh, the obverse of the coin, I actually thought this was a little bit higher of a grade than 15, but, you know, it's NGC. You don't all, and with all grading companies, you can't always agree with um, their grades because sometimes you even get better grades than you think. So, but this was a really fun find. All right, let's see what's next. Next is a Buffalo Nickel. Let's bring this in, see if this will work. Come on, this was working last time. There we go. Bring it in. 1937 uh, Mint Error Buffalo Nickel. It's got a curved clip at 8 o'clock. Let's see if I bring it up. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> right where it is is actually that one prong. This one right there. That prong is right where the clip is, so it's actually really hard to see. But this one graded out very fine 25. Nice, uh, nice error. You can kind of see if we can get it to focus on the buffalo more. Come on. You can kind of see it right above the buffalo's head where it curves in a bit. So that, that one's another nice one. And we got four left. So after these four, we'll be all done. And then I'm, uh, I can get on to doing something else because I know these getting too long. Or I don't want to keep people. You got other stuff to do than just listen to me yammer about some fun coins. So this one is a 1917. It struck 10% off center, they said. If a buffalo nickel, you can see the nice off center strike. I actually picked this one up uh, at our last open bid board um, at the coin shop. We do that twice a year where everything starts at 25 cents. And that doesn't matter what it is, you know. Um, and this happened to be up there and I picked it up for a reasonable price. So was quite happy with it and uh, glad it came back a nice high grade. I kind of thought mint state. I was hoping mint state, but I'm not unhappy with this either. And then on the reverse, you can see just how far up the nickel it goes. It's quite nice. Nice full detail on the buffalo. So that's a, that's a gorgeous coin to add to the collection. We also picked up... Let's see. Yep, I want to make sure you guys can see it. And this is a 1945 S. Uh, sadly, this came back uh, an error. Uh, it is a mint error, but it came back with um, unk details, obverse uh, wheel mark, and it was broad struck. So it is it is a broad struck error, but there are what they say wheel marks, and wheel marks are from when it goes into a coin rolling machine. So I don't necessarily agree with them. But it's in this holder. I have no plans on taking this holder, taking it out of this holder, because I don't. If I've sent it in and it doesn't come back what it is on a normal basis, either I keep it or I just move it along like this. Oh, it's not. I'm sorry, it's not uh, focused in. Or I move it along like this, and somebody else, if they want to take the chance, can undo it and move it in. But some people just like to have it as as a tight piece. You know, they got a mint error. You know. Nice uncirculated, you know, um, mercury dime. So this one I'll probably pass on, which is fine. You know, when you find them, you find them, and you can hope for the best, but you don't always get it. Again, same thing. This is a, oh, let me bring it up. This is a 1945D. It's another mint error. It's unk details with an obverse wheel mark and a straight clip. This had a nice straight clip at well, 1 o'clock. But it had the obverse wheel marks, so again they gave it a uh, a no go. Now the now they didn't mar they didn't show it, but also down here about seven o'clock, there's actually a second clip. So um, I wish they would have put that there were two, but obviously they just denoted the one large one. Um, but it's it's definitely it's easy to see that there are two, at least in person. So there's that, and then let's see what the last one is. The last one is another quarter, and this one also got um, a details grade, sadly, but it is part of it. You know, you're not always going to get everything perfect. But this was a 1978 quarter. Uh, it did get unk details. It is a mint error. It struck off center with reverse wheel marks. And I guess I, I just don't see them. I don't know specifically what they're talking about in all of them, because some of them are minor. 
But it is what they say it is. Then it is what they say it is. So hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed this box opening. You know, folded everything up. That's it. That is the end of it. So that's what we got back this time from NGC. Obviously, it's it's quite a long time for NGC to uh, to send stuff in and then get it back. So I think I sent this in at the at the Long Beach show in January. So it's going to be a while before I send any more in. So thank you all very much for watching. I'll get this video right up to you all. And I hope you guys have... Oh, let's... Oh, man. Let's put that back on, I guess, for something. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys later.